Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a long time, like it's been a very long time and I don't look my best. So why wouldn't I put my best fit forward, my best face forward? I don't want to get your hopes up. <laughs> it's going to get any better than this. But today, I have finally decided to try some Cocoa Apricot Cream Wax from Makesy slash Wooden Wick. Um, but I'm nervous because I bought some the... Cocoa Apricot Cream Wax from Wooden Wick when it was Wooden Wick a long time ago and it's been sitting on my shelves for a long time and then a while back I got it again when they were having a sale and they changed their manufacturer for it um, somewhere probably in between those two wax purchases so mm, we're just gonna do a little test and see how I like it how I like just like the feel of Cocoa Apricot Cream um, I mean, I'm still going to do 100% soy candles because that is just what I like to do. I've figured it out. I get great cold throw, hot throw, smooth tops every time I make candles. So I don't have problems with soy wax. But I just wanted to try out something different because I have the wax and I need to try it. And I've got these beautiful new jars um, that I think I want to use that for. So... <sighs> That's what I'm thinking, guys. So we're going to be doing some cocoa apricot cream today. Stick around. So this, just random tidbit, this is why you should open up your packages when you get them instead of waiting months on end to open up your packages um, and inspect your stuff because like I went to pull out a jar this beautiful beautiful jar I know it's great and um, once it settles there's a crack in it so luckily I need to test so this can be a great test jar for what I need to do so I pulled out a couple more and I didn't see any more cracks so you know I'm just hoping that it's just an outlier God, it looks it look terrible it just look terrible anyway <laughs> so oh also what I'm doing what I'm going to be taking notes on I have a whole bunch of samples from Wooden Wick uh, different different sample bottles and a whole um, sample kit that I bought a long time ago when I was on Wooden Wick binge trying to be like all the cool kids when I realized it's mainly a publicity stunt and you can make quality candles and not spend a fortune um <laughs> But, so I have all these testers, though, that I just kind of want to smell, because some people are still, like, still wooden wick fragrance oils are, you know, above and beyond other, their blends and the like. But, of course, I blend a lot of my own things. A lot of my own candles and stuff use their own blends um, from different, I make, I make my own sense combining different blends and stuff so that does help that does um, you know change out what other people are making with the same fragrance oil as you um, but some people are still just like it's just fantastic so I'm gonna smell them do some testers I have tester strips um, but a lot more than just these but these came in this particular box but I have a lot more than just these um, tester strips and I'm gonna write things down in my notebook just to kind of keep God keep um tabs on what I like and what I don't like um so that way I know what if I want to buy anything going forward but you know for some of Wooden Wick makes these fragrance oils like we're talking like 50 bucks for 16 ounces or higher like you know 75 80 ounce for 16 ounces of fragrance oil and you can go sick through 16 ounces of fragrance oil like that so eh, it's just hard for me to make that decision <laughs> to go completely wooden wick fragrance oils because you still got to make a profit and you know as you increase your cost of goods you have to increase the cost of the candle or else you don't make a profit so and then it's like not worth the work anyway um so that's my rant for that oh god so over here we have oh the jar is telling you this is a better color representation than than where it was uh this is my current jar that i use now making some working on my holiday candles right now but this is the current jar that i use now so this is obviously holds a lot more wax um it's wider um, and it's just this 
just this beautiful, beautiful lilac color, and I love it. Um, cocoa apricot cream wax comes in slab form versus soy that comes in flake form. So it's just going to have to be cut into smaller chunks and into sections. And then I do everything now. When I started, I did everything double boiler method, but I do everything now in melting thingies, melting pots. Um, so this, it's going to go in this one that I haven't used in a long time because um, it's my smallest one. So it's going to go in this one and I'm going to melt it down. Now the internet has a lot of mixed reviews on what, what this should be melted at. Um, you know, like it'll say on different websites for cocoa, apricot cream to do like 100 to 200, like, well, sorry, 180 to 190 for melt and fragrance and pour all within that time frame. Then other people say they feel their best points are about 200, melting at 200. So I think I'm going to try and melt at 200 and pour around 180 and try that out first. So I'm going to do that with this lovely candle. And we're going to do the, um, the multiple wick testing thing, which we'll see later, basically where you don't glue down a wick in the middle. So I can try out um, at least two different wooden wicks for this jar. So let's get started. So you can obviously tell it came from one container into this container and they just like popped it out and put it in here. But you know, this was their previous brand. Um, so I don't know my like new slabs since I got them in 45 pounds that they're like 45 pound giant blocks. So they won't be making an appearance here. <laughs> I got to get my knife and cut it up and I'm just going to combine the two once I find my knife. Ooh, firm. It's, firm. Oh, it's firmer than I thought it would be. When I was looking it up, it said something about this can be used for tarts and container candles. So, you know, I thought it was something you were looking to do or wax melts, or wax tarts. I'm just, I'm just cutting it up so that way it will melt faster. Guys, always remember to close your pure, your poor spouch.
gesso, but it's like this beautiful white wax. It's not off-white. It seems to be a very nice, like, pure, sturdy, like, it's, it's, it's hard. Like, it's a hard wax. You know. I don't like this wax paper, though. You didn't know like this is how like a pure type of paraffin also comes in this slab form uh this is igi 4625 um which is really great for um pillar candles um but this but this is also like rock hard like i have to use a a hammer to break this up and then from previous videos you should have seen From previous videos, you should have seen um, soy wax, but this is what soy wax looks like. This is, in this little container, I have soy 494, which is for um, for um, ooh, wax melts. And then the big one down below, I have 464, which is what I use for my candles, which do great. I use soy wax here and this is just it smells so good in this whole area it's a big area okay so it's melted which I'm trying to show you it's melted down let's see if it's at the right temperature or the temperature I want 198 that's not bad I'll take that 198 so there's always a lot of talk about infrared thermometers versus um, here I'll just point you at me <laughs> there's always a lot of talk about infrared thermometers versus manual thermometers like the candy thermometers and things like that and how infrared thermometers might some people are like they're not accurate blah 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 because refraction and reflection and all the scientific things so my take on it is no matter which type of thermometer you decide to use use that one consistently okay so that way if I measure my wax at 198 when I decide to pour and cool, when I decide to I mean, pour my thingy, pour my, what am I trying to say? Pour my fragrance oil into it. That's the temperature I decide to do it at. And then when I decide to pour it into my glass, into my jar, those are the temperatures that matter. And if those temperatures work from what I have recorded on my thermometer, then those are the temperatures I will use going forward versus trying to be like, okay, well, my thermometer is probably off by two degrees because of this and doing math. No, just use it consistently. If you feel like you need to go up on your stuff to you know a couple of degrees higher or a few degrees lower to see how that goes, that's fine, but just use one option and that'll help you out in the testing progress. Okay, so normally I wouldn't do this like this have my jar on my scale and pour my wax directly in, especially before fragrance oil. But since I'm testing and I haven't used this jar, I don't know how much wax can be held in this jar. So I'm going to do it this way. And then I'm also gonna use this like cheap, these cheap, cheap wicks. Um, <laughs> these cheap wicks to use as like like a wick guide marker so that way I know where I probably want this to be filled at um, to help me out when pouring Where'd my sharpie go because I should leave I'm probably gonna use dust covers for these instead of lids um, to keep expenses down so I just want to do that so I can fill them up a little bit higher than I would if I would use lids Sharpie just go. There it is. Under my stuff. And so now I can see about where I want the wax to fill it up at. 
and now I can pour hot wax all over my hand <laughs> you know because this is 200 degree product so I definitely want to look it out so this jar by itself already weighs 17.8 ounces that's already a pound itself you know how heavy that is for shipping like that's heavy okay let's try not to make too much of a mess try not to push on it too much of a mess. I don't know why it's not pulling out evenly like it normally does. So that didn't pour out as evenly as it normally does, which is annoying, but it is what it is. So we're at like 13, 12, 12 ounces of liquid at this height. And so if I was doing a lid, well, probably a little bit less just cause it's dirty. If I was doing a lid, I would probably want to use a little less. So maybe really like 11.9, so 12 ounces, 12 ounces of liquid in this jar, which is like, which is a 15 ounce jar. So that at least helps me know that. And now we can do a little thermometer action, see what our temperature is at. It's 200, so we're gonna let that cool down for a moment and I'm gonna clean off my scale. Cause I'm gonna try and do it at like maybe 185 is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling a 185 type of, type of put in fragrance oil. Okay, so I kind of cleaned up the scale a little bit. This is now at 187, so I think this is when I'm going to add it. I decided on this fragrance from Wooden Wick. It's smoked cedar and leather. It's something I've had in my stash of fragrance oils for a long time. And since we know this is a 12 ounce candle, and if we want to add 10 ounces of fragrance oil, we want to add 1.2, I mean, we want to add 10% of fragrance oil, we want to add 1.2 ounces in here. Also, y'all, don't make candle math hard. Like, don't make candle math harder than it needs to be. Just keep it simple. Like, just keep it simple. So now, I'm going to stir, 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 stir. I know this isn't going to be, like, the best of the best. my little one is covered in unicorn wax but I know this isn't going to be like the best of the best for testing just because of probably the cool down and the stirring in this and then also just now seeing how high this is with fragrance oil I mean, obviously all of this is gonna work just fine for my purposes. That's all right, I wanted to scrape the bottom up because it cooled on the bottom when it got poured in. So I wanted to scrape the bottom up. But, so now I'm just gonna use this, this reed diffuser. to help me stir, stir, stir my fragrance oil around in this jar. It smells really good. Alexa, set a timer for a minute and a half. One minute and 30 seconds, starting now.
And so I'm pretty sure moving forward for this jar, I would probably put 11 ounces of oil in a jar and then do the testing from there and then do the for this height. I mean, I already don't plan on putting lids in here, so this is fine. And I wouldn't typically stir in my jar because it just doesn't work well like this, obviously. As you see, I'm making a mess, but that's all part of the testing process, you know? And that's all part of playing with wax and fragrance. You make a mess sometimes and that is okay. That is okay. I mean, wax is pretty difficult sometimes to clean up, but... Until you're doing a lot of scraping, I feel like I'm always scraping off my countertops. To clean them up and so I really scraped the bottom up of all that wax that cooled down so that way all of the fragrance oil could be combined with all of the wax so you want to make sure if you ever feel like your wax cooled prior to Alexa stop you want to make sure that you got all of the waxy parts like in your pouring pitcher and your mixing pitchers you want to make sure you scraped the bottom and you scraped the sides and you can clearly see all those areas and so now we're gonna let this baby girl cool and then um, we'll do the multi wick test probably either tonight or tomorrow so I'll see you guys later bye